at 6 o'clock. I'm going to start with the roll call. Alderman Blondo. Here. Alderman Alexander. Here. Alderman Quinker. Here. Alderman Johnson. Alderman Donnie is here. Uh, we will have a minutes at our next meeting. Uh, public comment. Is there anything the public would like to yes. address our committee? All right, Ms. Green, thank you. Carol DePace Green. Uh, the other night I had an opportunity to compliment Alderman Fred Bellato, and I want to do it again in the Finance Committee because this is where some of that uh, issue comes in at. One of the things that Alderman Fred Bellato has done consistently, along with the former Alderman Nancy Thompson, is forego her, you know, they both have foregone their pay as aldermen for as long as they've been aldermen. That is something that, you know, possibly should be considered by all other aldermen to help pay off you know, some of these bills, particularly the one that um, is a concern for a lot of people uh, for the law firm Montana and Welsh. I want to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know that these bills that you're looking at have got to just absolutely astound you. As we know, we've had no original treasurer reports for as long as Carmen's been in office. We have no monthly city collector reports for as long as Randy's been the city clerk. These reports should be compared to reports that come out of the finance department. and not just go get numbers from finance and, and ex expect them to be the true numbers. Uh, again, um, what's being discussed is a city budget. People have urged and encouraged the city to adopt a budget and a line item audit for a, a decade or more. So I'm looking forward to seeing those things in 2020. And, and hopefully um, 2020 is going to turn out much better than 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Is there anyone else? Mr. Steve? Alan Steve, thank you, Chairman Donahue, our committee members. Uh, could you please tell us what percent will the tax levy be raised this year? I, I believe the tax levy were allowed to go up to the 5%, and we were going the 5% the instead. So it's going to be increased 4.9 percent. Four, yeah, and that's and that's if the county allows it. But we were raising it the 4.9, and then the county determines if we could raise an entire cap. All right, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, anyone else? I don't see anyone. So moving along, um, we have a couple items under old business. Um, first is the pay scheduler and the training tracker. I will have Sergeant Sepasi if you want to come up, please. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Chief wanted me to just come by. Uh, she apologized she wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, since our, the last meeting, when this was brought up, just wanted to inform the committee that last year's cost for Schedule Express was $5,184. Since the last meeting, we got the bill for 2020 and has gone up to $6,240. I spoke with the owner of the company for Schedule Express. If we wish to cancel, it has to be by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of an auto renewal and they're going to be expecting their payment. Um, so we want to bring back again that skate pay scheduler. I talked to space scheduling and they did say that um, that's an issue where it can be billed into 2020 and they would work with us going forward appropriations and everything next year. So we're just looking to um, be able to enter in the agreement with them just to save the almost $3,000. So we already pay a service um, for 2019 and 2020 it's going to go up but we will stop, we'll cancel the service, and this will be just a pay schedule or we'll replace Schedule the Express for next year, Got yes. It. All right, are there any other questions? Alderman Klinker, a lot of no. All right, is there a motion to approve this item? Motion by Alderman Bellato. Is there a second? second? Alderman Klinker, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. Motion's carried. Uh, move along, the training tracker, Sergeant? Is that the same? That's in the same. If you want to approve the train tracker now, uh, we can't hold off on that. That isn't necessarily really time sensitive. Right, yeah, we'll, we'll just offer. come back to it uh, when we do the appropriation. Okay. Uh, 
in January, February. So. And then we did have uh, an answer. I believe it was brought up about the 911 surcharge. There was a question. Oh, sure. About the yeah. 88,000. So I talked to the executive director there. That price is going up next year for 911. Uh, the total is going to be $32,635 a month, up from 31,457. So the total for the year is going to be three hundred ninety-one thousand six hundred and twenty-seven dollars and forty cents. So, and I, so I think, um, thank you for that. I think mm -hmm. my question last time was, does that so that number will stay the same? Yeah. So why did it go up now towards the end of this year? What happened? It, it didn't necessarily go up. It was that there wasn't the appropriated amount was assuming a certain amount of the surcharge money coming back. Got it. The way that uh, the executive director basically said you should budget or appropriate the full amount of what the bill is going to be and we should likely get about twelve thousand dollars a month back in surcharge but it's about three months behind their mm -hmm. fiscal year starts in december so we wouldn't start seeing those payments probably till about february got so, it so, all right so we're going to make sure for this year appropriation we put the yeah more if you remember if the chief yeah. remembers for the appropriation we know yeah. we need to put that that amount in so, are there any questions regarding that how is the rebate of the state yeah, so there's about $25,000 a month that comes back in surcharge, give or take, depending on the usage that comes in. We get half of that back, so about $12,500 roughly a month. We get that back every three months is when they issue the bill with the surcharge cost that's deducted from our bill. And then that's in a check form that comes back payable to the state? It's, it's not a check form that comes back. It basically, if we're charged the $32,000 for three months, so it'd be about sixty, or I'm sorry, ninety-six thousand dollars. We'd be seeing thirty-six thousand dollars off of that. Okay. So. so it's just in form of a credit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Sergeant. Um, moving along, Eric's not here again, but I know in the packet there was an email, um, and really what this does for us closing out will allow us to apply for. Um, the ability to be reimbursed about fifty-five thousand in federal reimbursement um, by closing this out. I'm fine. I'm fine with this. It's just I'd like to see. Do we know when they're going to do a final punch list check through? Can you, Mayor Sal? Could you ask, please? Thank you. And can you please let Eric know that anytime there's there's something on the agenda pertaining to his firm that he needs to be here, or we won't be approving Someone these things. All right, just 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 if you could pass it along. So, all right, um, this would be in the amount. This would close out the project. Um, are there any questions regarding regarding this? No, I know the, I know this work that they're specifically referencing was completed. It was so, the lights. Yeah, I yeah. know the painting of the conduit. I'm right. The painting. Doing it. it was yeah. done this this summer. Sure, go ahead. Thank you, I had a meeting with Eric Alvarez, and he told me that it's not final payment for Chatham Street Bridge. It is um, the 11th estimated payment, 11th payment. So it's an estimated payment, but that payment needs to be paid in order for us to be in the fire list for IDOT. Mm -hmm. So it's so I just want to correct myself for number three. It's not final payment. It's just an estimated payment, number 11. Got it. All right. Any questions about that? Nope. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, this item as uh, the final payment for the Chatham Street? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Clinker, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, signify by saying no. All right. The ayes have it. Motion carried. All right. Item four. Um, provide Jim or Marisol if you'd like to provide an update regarding this. So at staff meeting, Jim Polstrow mentioned that um, to return, we want to return the machine, and um, they're basically going to charge us uh, a returning rental fee of twenty-two fifty a month. We've had it for three months, so three times that amount. Sure. So would have to pay you. back in order for them to. So in regards to this, I've been thinking about this. I know Jim called me on this. I, you know, I think we have this this payment or this purchase was made illegally by the former finance director. We tell Caterpillar, sorry, we're not paying the storage fee. Come get up their equipment. If they want to sue us, we'll we'll go after Mike Marzell then for the purchase he made because there's no city council minutes backing this purchase up. The city council didn't authorize this purchase, and we're not going to pay for the storage of this fee. So tell Caterpillar to come get their equipment. If they have a problem, they could 
I'm sure there'll, there'll be some legal things, but we could we have someone who did purchase this without city council approval, and I would expect the council or the city to then go after the individual who did so. So Jim, if you could tell Caterpillar to come get their equipment. We're not paying storage fees, we're not paying anything. We don't, we, this was never approved. There's no minutes approving this in any of the committee meetings. In the city council meeting, this was done by a, a rogue employee of the city, and it's, it's on him now. If they want to come after Mike, they can go after Mike, but this isn't the city's responsibility. So can you really relate that, Jim? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll. Thank you. I right, wanted to just state that any, any purchase that's not appropriated for is purchased illegally. It hasn't gone through the council. What was that? Any purchase that's not purchased without going through city council and it's not appropriated for is purchased illegally. So we're going to keep an eye on that going forward. I agree. Thank you. There's, There's no such happen. thing as approving above budget that doesn't exist that's an illegal purchase. Right. We agree. All right. Any other comments, questions? Nope. All right. Um, moving on, we have the Aramac Service for Aid Supplies and Services proposal. Um, Mayor Soff, you wanted to, I assume this is you. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're going to show up. Aramark was um, planning to show up on the 9th, um, but since they're not here, I know at the last finance meeting um, it was approved for just the, um, uh, they came, okay, well, they came with a proposal for mats. And first aid and then the committee agreed just first aid on a weekly basis and uh, they they didn't we didn't um, execute a full you know contract so I asked them to send the you know their contract over for finance to revisit the contract so basically they're asking for the committee to approve the contract as is so this would approve with Aramark, it's ninety eight dollars a week. A week. I got a, so I got a concern. Was, sure, I got go a ahead. Chance. And I'm gonna. I might put. Is Howard still here? No. Knock out. But yeah, I, I, do, I do. Wanna to add, I do want to add. I know where you're coming from. Uh, Mr. Add. Kapari, I got a question on the spot for you. He brought up that this is a bad deal, and he wants to revisit it anyway. So we don't have a contract. Correct. There's so only two Howard, you heard me. Before we uh, talk about this, you did make comments to me about the Aramac uh, first aid situation. You want to revisit this in appropriations? The need for it or The need it? for it or if we need as many or if we even need the contract at all? I, 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 don't, I personally don't need it for the building department. I was against it at the beginning, but it just came. We have the box on the wall. Yeah, I brought this up a couple of meetings ago. And See, we don't need we one in the mayor's office either. I need this. This is a waste of money. They're not changing anything. They're not adding anything. Yeah, and this way, I guess it's because the rec center asked for more gloves. Wouldn't the gloves just come out of their 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 mm -hmm. first aid kit? So well, I don't see why we need to purchase yeah. a whole separate box of gloves when it should just be coming. I don't know if that's considered first aid material, but. Because we um, need to. I know for the. Our police officer it's probably wouldn't you need for, for for personal protection services yeah, if you're uh, fire to protect equipment. Yeah. yeah, right. You guys, yeah, are just if, you're, if you're rendering first, first aid, it's yeah. Yeah. Well, the ambulance guys. They get the best thing possible. It's just an exchange item. Yeah. Right. Well, I just know. So there was an issue at the rec center where, right. where <coughs> Bob needed some gloves and for cleaning and then for first aid. Uh, so I just don't see why that wouldn't come out of the. The box is really <coughs> small, like at this size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. All right. So, so what? What? What would? We don't even go ahead. We just have to take like their box of oranges. If the committee would allow me, the mayor's office can send them a letter letting them know that their services are no longer needed. And we have to verify with police and fire. Does this need any of this stuff at all? Otherwise, we don't need it. Sergeant, do you guys use? I think we use the band-aid for what guy that fell in conversation once out of that box. Otherwise. Yeah. We as oh, far as fire goes, and, uh, no, we have a fire department next door. We have an ambulance that has oh, pretty much everything in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Jim, Public Works, you need this? Um, we, we do need some kind of a first aid kit. So could we, and then we the golf course, so maybe? Okay. You can purchase a first aid key from Walmart for $35. Yes, everything I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <coughs> know. Oh, on this screen, please. I don't know. So, how about this? How about we do we do one at the golf course, one at Public Works, and then one at the rec center since they're they're separate. 
non site non site facilities obviously public works because someone there's you're using right. power tools and different things the golf course someone could get hurt doing whatever and then the rec center you have people scraping their knee and falling no could i add could i add that osha i could look into osha compliance to see if we do need a box in every department we have first aid kits that are osha compliance all right, well, all right, well, all right, well, but I, but still, but if we, I think those three, those three sites probably need them um, mm -hmm. the most, or probably, would probably use them more than the other ones. Okay. Um, Can I say something? Yeah. So as far as OSHA requirements, Marisol, you might want to check with Mark Miller, because a couple of years back, Mark went through and did evacuation plans and, and brought us up to OSHA, because we were, I'm talking about before I was chief, is when he started doing it. Um, so he'd probably be able to tell you what's required. Okay. But I kind of agree with what all, all Alexander is saying is you could go, I mean, there's the fire department deals with a couple of different, more medical and a couple other different places where we could purchase for the rec center, for gym, down yeah. public works, even for the police station if you want to. You know, it's, it's not a bad idea to have a box of some sort on, you know, I mean, I know there's an ambulance around the corner for you guys, right. you know, but if they're on a call or whatever, it's not a bad idea to have something. But instead of spending money over and over and over for these right. people just to come look and go, oh, we don't need to replace it or we're going to replace band-aids and charge a lot of money, it'd probably be a better idea just to do that. And then maybe have each department kind of keep an eye on it. Because I know the one we had at the fire department when I first started was from like the 50s, you know, and it had nothing in it, you know. So uh, it's probably a better idea to purchase it and sure. just have somebody from each department kind of keep an eye on it. That's my opinion. So can we? Can you do that, Marisol? Could you just look at, at the OSHA requirements for having them and then... Second, um, look maybe at some some companies where we could just purchase a kit outright. Chief, Chief Dean could help you, I'm sure. Marisol, with that, he's, I'm you. sure he's got a list of vendors. I know more medical was one that we used a lot, and a couple other ones. All right. Thank you. So I, we're, we won't take any action on that. If you could report back at our next uh, our next our next January meeting, January so. sixth. Yeah, January sixth. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, um, you know, Howard, while you're already up, uh, we're going to do the building official discussion. I I saw the email from the new building official. Um, if you wanted to do be with brief introductions. So I'm very happy here to uh, introduce our new building official. His name is uh, Mr. Sandino. He'll come up in a couple of minutes to talk a little bit about himself. But what I'd like to say is I did an extensive background re review on him. I also called all his references personally with Marisol. We all took notes and it was the same answer over and over again. Detailed oriented, compliant with codes, a good person to work with, mentoring in, in his character, and he is a person that wants to move us forward building wise. All right, thank you Howard. Um, we'll just hear a brief introduction from uh, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ahmed Aish Sandino. I'll be your new uh, building official. And, uh, well, my office is open to any question or any phone call or any email that you like to do. And if you have any question regarding any uh, particular of the building or any area of uh, Blue Island you're familiar with, i uh, be glad to happy and happy to answer at any time. So uh, I'll be uh, looking forward to work with you and be able to answer any question that you have in mind. Are there any questions tonight? Alderman Blotto? I don't want to go too lengthy, but I'd suggest you come to community development, which is the normal meeting you'll be coming to. But there's a couple big things that I'm going to bring now, and I'll bring it back up to community development. There's sign codes along Western Avenue that has to be maintained and, and different than, than anything else. Howard will tell you we ran into problems last time we had a new commissioner come in wasn't aware of the sign code, giving out permits, and some businesses that were denied of signs, and then they see someone down the street getting approved of signs, it causes issues for us. That's a big one. In the summertime, grass and vacant property is the biggest thing we're going to hear Alderman complain to you about. Sure. So trash in the you got plenty of time to get ready for it, and garbage to be picked up in the alleys, finding houses that leave trash outside their properties. Stuff like that is the biggest issue, Howard will tell you. And I'll repeat everything. I'm sure there's people on my committee that are going to talk your ear off about it, but those are going to be the big issues to get ready for. Uh, so. I'm familiar with that, especially summertime. It's something that I have to be kept up uh, at a daily basis. Yeah. So, any other okay. questions? So I really just more of a comment. Uh, the last building official didn't respond to two emails, which I think is completely disrespectful. Um, a busy, I'm a busy guy. Everyone's busy, but it takes two seconds to say, hey, I got your email, looking into it. Because otherwise it doesn't get done. And I have to call Jim. I have a perfect example. I have 
for six months, for more a year now, I've been complaining about the garbage in the alley right behind my house. I've told Brian, I brought this to Howard's attention, and it continues to happen, continues to happen, continues to happen. I've, Jim, just what, Thursday? I sent you the picture of what? 10 bags of overflowing trash in a single three bedroom, single family house. And this has been going on a year. And Brian just blew me off, blew me off. And I'm still, I'd still, it's because it, I had rats, rats. We've never, I've lived in my house six years. I've never had a problem with rodents until, until this family moved in and the building department did not think it was important enough for me or the residents who live around me to, to address this. So I'm not, I'm, I know I'm, I'm kind of going on a rant here, but I'm just, I'm saying I hope you'll be more responsive. I understand and uh, actually something, I mean, especially nowadays so we have technology, I mean, I think that uh, one of the major uh, communication is email and also the phone and text. Even though I kind of look around at the building and we, I mean, there's certain things that like uh, it needs to be done out there, but uh, I'll, I'll keep posted, I'll keep you posted on every information that needs to be done and uh, whatever, you know, question you have, I'll, like I said, you know, I'll be glad right. to answer. It was the same thing with overgrown property. Alderman Rita, who's the other third ward alderman, we would talk about the same house over and over. And we'd see Brian go, Brian, do you, do you know about this? He goes, oh, we're looking at it. It's like, well, why haven't you responded to the the 15 emails we've been sending you pictures just saying hey we know it's an issue we're we're trying to to fix the situation because then we look like we're unresponsive right. we're just all trying yeah. to make the city look look good we're all trying to do the right thing and it's hard to do when no one's communicating back with us well, so i know right. i'm not i'm just kind of pontificating here about no, this so it's fine no, working it's, with uh, you and your resume looks very impressive so i i i want to get those response because i want to you know work right away and i'll be able to really take care of the situation once you know what needs to be done right you know on a priority basis because Great. you know there's uh, there's stuff and i actually inf rat infestation is something that nobody wants to tolerate anywhere no so and we never had a problem until yeah. it's just and it's just, again it's just garbage Any kind just of stacked up yeah. and so it's just thank you i i look forward to working with you so definitely thank Likewise. you for coming yeah. tonight um and good luck with the city well so. thank you much uh, in regards to that uh, we were actually discussing before our meeting tonight. So I spoke to him about a variety of issues about property maintenance, and he could he could re reaffirm what uh, what you're saying. Uh, I'm with the camp, and so is Mr. Sandino, being proactive to start doing enforcement, not wait for the aldermen to complain or wait for someone else to complain. So we're gonna we're gonna start structuring people to do different things and to be more proactive to document, to follow through, to go through adjudication. You're always going to have those weird situations where it's an absentee property owner, it's very hard to get, and sometimes Brian was running into that. For situations like this, what happens, this sounds like a person is trying to like uh, move out of a house instead of calling a private dumpster company, they're just throwing trash for public works to come and pick it up. That shouldn't be tolerated, and it should be ticketed or, or summoned. We just have to be careful how we go through the procedure. I, I, I get it. I just want him to be responsive. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. It's just to say, hey, got it, working on it. And and he's going to he's so. going to appear tomorrow at the city council during public session to introduce himself. So if anyone has any additional questions or concerns, please please bring him up. Uh, bring them up, and, and you also have his email address, and I'll forward more information in a timely manner. Great. Thank you, Howard. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Any other questions? No. No. All right, thank you guys, thank you. Howard, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, this is in regards to Mr. Klinker, Alex Leufman, Ophelia Smith. Uh, the traffic analysis study was signed off. I think on Saturday they already did their first uh, clocking at traffic patterns and the in the parking lots. Tomorrow they're going to do uh, tomorrow they're going to do the weekday one for city council to see how it's being used. I just wanted to have a conversation with you before I reach out to them via email that the uh, analysis has started. It's going to take possibly eight weeks to complete. Four weeks into it, we have to re-review it internally and then. Uh, Sam Schwartz, they're going to do a presentation to City Council, probably close to our session, about their findings before we release it to the public, sure. before we release it to them. But I just wanted to Great, mention thank that. You. No, I appreciate the update, and I'm sure they will too. That yeah, and, and I'll copy you, and I'll copy Mr. Bellotta when I communicate with them that Beautiful. we already started the process. Thank you very much. I did not forget. Okay, thank you. I appreciate right. it. Thank you, Howard. All right, uh, moving along. Next, uh, we have payroll. Uh, payroll for this time is $350,861.61. Um, so I, I just know one of the things that we're asked about the check stuffing, I know that that's when we're having to pay child support. Uh, that's one of the reasons we get those. But Maris, I have a question. Are we, are we still giving money to 
Mr. Marzell's um, flexible spending account? Because I think one of these fees is going into Mike's FSA account. Right, but I think we need to look at that because I think we're still giving money to Michael's FSA account. Are there any questions regarding the, the payroll? Could you also, um, Marisol, speak to Vicki? Again, this is this not the correct report that we should be getting. It's a different report. Oh, I can um, so in talking with the payroll clerk, um, it was agreed upon by the mayor to revert back to the original reports that you were receiving when you were sworn in. Um, that's the report that you received in May, June, July, August. No, it's a report that Vicki sent me that was um, explaining all of this and it was broken down so that we can understand what these fees were, what was this, what was that, right. so that the numbers can match the actual table. Yeah, so we're reverting back, like I said, we're reverting back to the old, you know, report that was submitted before. Um, so she's fairly new. She's only been here for two months. So what you're saying is you're not going to share that report with us. <laughs> so what I'm going to say is um, she's been here for two months and she's still learning herself the reports and how they look and what they're, you know, where they go. So, you know, to give her a little time and then she can produce exactly what, you know, you're, you're asking for. So she's better, like, educated in exactly what the modules of Paycom can do. Because there's, the modules of Paycom is like, there's a lot of modules, <laughs> and she's still learning. It's two months on the job. Okay, so, so starting the first of the year, she will be able to. That's not giving her enough time, to be honest. It I mean, only took a couple of minutes to give me the report. Did so you, you were okay with the report the way it was before? Can you give no. me a date? I don't have a date. I'll have to look back in the email. I think yeah. she. you asked she for did. a specialized report, and right. she provided that. When I was questioning her about all these things that we had questions about that I'm finance screen, and she printed out a different report, and it broke down everything. And you were good with that. And we could understand what they were for, and it matched okay. up with the payroll. Perfect. If you can just give me that date, and then I can tell her this is the format that was okay. requested. So. But she, she was just following orders, just reverting back to the old way and then okay. starting anew. She's still learning. Like I said, she's been on the job for only two months. So. Did you get a copy of that? No, I, I didn't. I've oh, never seen that report. So you so. can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I would I'd like the date, too, so I can see okay. as well. So. And are we going to start doing payables before the day? Accounts payable? We do. I, don't I think mean, payroll. Oh, payroll. Are we going to start payroll before it's paid? Or are we going to keep approving after it's paid. It makes no sense to approve after it's paid. There's nothing we can change. Yeah, but I, I, how much lead time do we need to do that so we can approve the payroll before it's paid? I can check the law and see if we can do that. I, no, I think we could absolutely do that because it's it's an expenditure of, of city funds. I just, but I'm just curious how much lead time would you need or Vicki would need for us to do that so it's approved prior. Payroll is done Mondays and Tuesdays. So Tuesday right. would be the final report that is submitted um, to Paycom, and then she would have to wait for, for Paycom to uh, receive um, a work confirmation. confirmation, which is the report that you have there. So when she does her part on Tuesday, she waits until Paycom, you know, gets her a final Area. So next Monday and Tuesday would be the closeouts, and then payroll. Right, because pay, payroll was this past Friday. So next yes. Monday, next Monday and Tuesday, the 23rd and 24th would be the closeout. So we would have to start meeting a week later, I think, to do that. No, because they close out Monday and Tuesday, so the the pay period ends Saturday. At least this is where it was when I was here. Um, they do payroll. We always had to have payroll in for the finance department on Monday by a certain time. They got it all turned in by Tuesday, and then that payroll is Friday. That's three days later that people actually get paid. Right. So, th so in order to do this, we'd have to meet between the time that it closed out and the time they actually got paid. You know what I'm saying? So, so Wednesday, right. Wednesday or Thursday. It, that's, I mean, that's how it currently works. Right. I don't know if there's a way to, to 
change the scheduling or whatever. Um, but I think that's how it works. I'll just ask Okay. We'll take it under advisement. We'll, we'll try and figure out how, how we can do that. So, all right. Uh, are there any other questions regarding the payroll? This seems like it's a pretty standard one. I Probably the next one, we'll probably get some overtime because I know they were on snow call last night. Um, all right. Is there a motion to approve payroll for $350,861.61? Is there a second? I'll second. Alderman Klinker, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Motion's carried. Moving on, we are going to accounts payable. Um, well, actually, I, I have I do have a payroll question. Um, so Pam provided me this budget report, which I don't know still how I, how accurate it is, but why in, in the budget report, Marisol, why does it have ESDA? We approved the salary to be twelve thousand dollars, but in this budget report, it's still coming up as forty-four thousand dollars. Even though we we haven't paid, what actually shows we haven't paid anything to that, um, but it's still showing the full time as the salary is forty-four thousand four hundred thirty-eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. When last city council, the last appropriation, we just approved it as twelve thousand. So and then my other and then so and then in regards to this too, um, can you find out when when this was reconciled? Because so like the mayor's salary, he he gets thirty three thousand six hundred dollars, and this was printed last week or sent to me last week, but it says the mayor was only paid twelve thousand nine hundred twenty three dollars, and it said it's only sixty two percent of the salary with the budget year ending, and I'm not I'm not picking on the mayor. I'm just it doesn't seem like this is. It's, if it's truly accurate, it should show it's like 90% <coughs> expended because it's because it's the end of the year. I think that's a director of finance question. Yeah. So, well, but could you? Because we don't have a director of finance. Could you? I or could you? Well, it's the mayor's scope of work then. Yeah. yeah. But the mayor. The mayor told me at the last council, a couple of council meetings ago, since we don't have one, did all questions regarding finance go to him? So I've actually emailed them. I, I was looking for this re revenue and expense report. Mm -hmm. um, I, I get that. It's above your pay grade, basically. Um, so I think that question should go to him. I know that yeah. we're in the process of interviewing people for a finance thing, yes. but uh, director. But yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying that, you know, so maybe we should contact him and say, hey, why, why is this? I mean, this is not accurate. No, and I'm just curious because it, it should, why? like, it should it be should at be least close. in the 90% because we're at the, it's the, this should be the last payroll should be next uh, next Friday. So it should should almost be there should only have been two more payrolls on this so this should have been like 85 percent okay. so that's why i'm just curious when this when the when, when was this reconciled and if this is what we're going off of because this is i i got this because i kept seeing all the bob jackson emails saying that oh i'm over budget on this line over budget on this line so if we're going off something that's probably four months behind how do we know we're not over budget everywhere else right so like could you just could you find that out i'm sorry this was i know I'm, going on a tangent again. I, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, and it's like, I I don't know if I can produce the answers to that question. I'm just going to be honest so there's with no you. One like in the, said, there's no one in, so there's no one in the administration who could give us correct numbers? I'm not a finance person. Perhaps the CPA can explain. Is there, but is there anyone who works for the mayor in the mayor's administration? Dave Meyer. Dave, but does, so does Dave Myers could, could get us, so the Dave answer. told us last time, we've been asking for this. Is there anyone who could get us accurate information? Dave Meyer. Dave Meyer, okay. Correct. So ask Dave. Yes. So don't ask the mayor. You can. You can do what you want. <laughs> well, the mayor, the mayor, I don't know, unless he responds to you, I don't see any. I, 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 no, no. All right. All right. Thank you, Mayor. That's all right. That's sure. all right. Nope. So then going into accounts payable. Um, one second, let me just flip over. So the accounts payable. I know we got a new one because there was some double billing um, or double, there's a double entry on the insurance. Um, so the accounts payable for this time is $693,772.59. Uh, are there any questions? Because I, I have first, my first question, um, AT&T which goes back to my the budget and expenditure report um why why is it so over 
And I know this was something you've been asking on, and we still hasn't hasn't been produced. So what what's going on? Why is the AT and T budget so out of whack? It's like in the report that was given to me, GenGov telephone and pagers were one hundred and three thousand dollars over budget. So what's and I know this is something Alderman Clinker has been asking about. What's what's happening? What's why why are these bills so high? So you you can't answer. Like, can anyone answer in the mayor's administration? In the administration, is there anyone who works for the mayor can answer these questions? All right, so we're not paying the AT&T bill. So, so until we can get questions, we're not, we, how can we pay for this stuff if we don't have answers? We're, we're $140,000 over budget. This is, this, and Jim's been asking since, so, since yeah, June. Since, yeah, and, and if you look at the different months, there are a wide variety. So before the whole email crash and everything, I was sent three months worth of phone bills. And then eventually I got a listing, Marisol got me a listing of all the phone numbers. But since the email crashed, I don't have those bills anymore, but I was actually going to try and compare page by page. Because sure. there's such a variance in what we pay from one month to the next. You know, it makes no sense. And I know you were asking Janelle these questions, but they were never being... No, I didn't really get any answers, answers either right. from her or from Mike Marzell. What I can do in good faith is look into it as much as possible. Um, I'm not sure if AT&T will be able to talk to me because I am not an authorized um, person to talk to AT&T. Well, who's, so, who's an authorized person? Mike Marzell. So in order Mike doesn't work for the, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not I understand. yelling at you, I'm not, I'm just, Mike doesn't work for the city. So how do we have We're frustrated too. a We're person who's not an authorized user? The mayor, why is the mayor not the authorized user then? Well, like I said, I can work on it in good faith and put um, the mayor as an authorized person to talk to about the account. And then we can, once that's established, um, then we can ask them that question. So we're going to pull AT&T. Okay. Um, now, with regards to legal bills, I was just noticing, again, Benish billed us, which was the it. hospital attorney, billed us $10,145.50. So, but in the, hold on, Fred, But in the Odelson bill, there's a line in there, I believe it's the September, for one of the September, October bill, there's a $10,000 charge for for hospitals, for the hospital negotiations. There's one in here too, yeah. And then one in here. So we've been, we paid the last month, we paid Benish, I think 36,000. Now we're paying another 10, but we're also paying our city attorney money to do this work as well. So, and the hospital sold, so we shouldn't be paying anything for. Right, but so my, but my question is why, why is Benish, which we, we hired, the city council did hire Benish to do hospital negotiation, hospital work, but why is Oldelson also charging us Eleven hundred bucks or eleven thousand dollars in their one bill. There's. So okay. I got. We're, we're on legal bills. I got a question. Go, Alder Water. Go ahead. So, under Odelson and Sturk, community development is never sent, with the exception of um, last year, for just a document on cannabis. The entire cannabis work has been done by Montana Welsh. Why are we still getting bills for cannabis um, studying and resolution and zoning from Odelson and Sturk? That's my question. That's fine until we get clarification because they shouldn't be, if one law firm's working on something, that law firm shouldn't be. They can CC each other, but there shouldn't be research on both sides when that work was never authorized by any city council committee. Okay, so I've been going on the same route, uh, uh, multiple attorneys hitting, uh, attending city council meetings from the same law firm. I can go on and on, but there, there should be, we got to start looking at scaling back some costs. So, but, so you wanted to pull that, that one? Yeah, because I never, our committee never authorized sending anything to um, Odelson and Stark. So could we pull that, just that line item from the bill and just So 73, that? the $73,089.18. Right, right, right. So I guess the, the, clarifi the clarification that I need is what the hospital, why are they doing double hospital work? When we hired a whole different law firm to do entire hospital negotiations, so why is Old Sinister still participating? So that's my, my question. And I, I agree. And then the yeah, cannabis thing is actually number 127258, $6,131. It's tied in with the opposing water, which I know they are on, and attendance at city council. but. We have to probably strike that entire six thousand one thirty-one out of the bill because we don't know what part of that's cannabis that wasn't sent to them. 
Oh, so oh, we're just talking about pulling individual portions. Correct. My question was just pulling in that invoice for just that amount, and so, also Quorum South 127 240. So uh, I'm sorry, can you, can you say those those two numbers again? I mean, I defer to you. you yeah, know. I just but can you just say I, can, I'm trying to write notes, and can you just say so, what what the at quorum? Olson, it's one two seven two four zero. One two seven. That's the Quorum Metro South for two thousand eighty one dollars, and I had the same question you had with the Benish situation. Yeah, right there. One two seven two four zero. Quorum Metro South, two thousand eighty one dollars. That's page fourteen out of twenty. So two thousand eighty one dollars. There's another one. This is what it was just given tonight. Right. Nine thousand eight hundred fifty one dollars and twenty five. Oh, I circled that one too. Okay. All right. So that's one two seven two six four. How much is how much is that one, Fred? Nine thousand eight hundred fifty one dollars and twenty five cents. Oh, like he's nine thousand eight hundred fifty one dollars mm -hmm. and twenty five cents, and the other one. The amount was two thousand eighty-one dollars and twenty. How much is the marijuana one? That you the marijuana to? one is six thousand one thirty-one eight cents. Six thousand one thirty-one eight cents. Eight cents. Okay. So and I, I, I need explanation. I know they prepared one sheet months and months ago. They they sent it to, to um, our economic developer. Other than that, the committee has never authorized. We sent the football to Montana Welsh, so there should be no work on any zoning or planning or. Ordinances or nothing out of Otis and the Stir. Um, so, can you pull also on that that Olson bill um, until we get more clarification? Those line items, those three line those items, right? Unless there's, the unless there's any other Metro questions on the line items. Form. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. No. Oh. I think that's all I had. Um, so three line items. Yeah, and then the so the three are the the two that had to do a quorum, okay. and then the one had to do with cannabis. with cannabis. And the again the the quorum issue is we were paying Benish all this money. On it was actually a recommendation off Olson and Sturk. So why is Olson and Sturk also putting I guess or why are they still involved in any hospital negotiations? And you know, and even further on that is why the the city council said I believe at least three times we do not we do not want the the two million dollar deal that quorum was offering. So why did Odelson and Strick keep pursuing that when we were when we said no three times? So we got charged eleven grand after we were told. Oh, we more told than that. No. Yeah. 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 Right. So and we were banished. So that's so. So why why is there the not the why is there double people doing double work for the same thing? Okay. Why and then the cannabis. Okay. Any other questions on accounts payable? I got a Sorry. question. Is uh, all the bills being sent to Odelson and Strick to review? All the bills being sent to Olson and Stark to review. I don't know what you mean. Hmm? No. I, I don't understand. So, Olson and Stark is not reviewing all the accounts payable? No. 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 Okay. On the um, CDW government, what's general government 12 period? What department is that? General, so general gov government um, is Blue Cat, Mark Miller, legals and the gen government, um, line the item. And gen gov, I just don't have that as the department, it's noted. So what happened, what, I think, you know what, Annette, um, Alderman um, Alexander, there was one bill for 41 computers. It was told to IT, to break them down to each department. I think those are the leftovers that we don't know where they're gonna go. That's why we charge them to GenGov. And then once we find out who they go to, if a department needs it, then we'll charge the department accordingly. Or we'll try to get our money back for those 11 computers that are in GenGov. So we ordered them? We ordered 41, we didn't use all of them, according to IT. So IT didn't know how many computers we needed? IT ordered 41. Um, every department said they needed, you know, X amount of new computers, and then that's what I believe that's what was left over after all that, uh, after all the calculations. That's why they're in GenGov, I believe. But we did order 41 computers. Okay. We went over the list and cut, <laughs> we, we eliminated computers. Yes. yes. 
this it was 46 41? right Still the proposal said 46 so for asking 46, 46 we order 41 and still so do we know what departments ask for more we got to I believe the building department needed one more. Okay. I think that was the addition. When I was here, you guys asked me to cut computers, and I sent an email. I was willing to cut three computers. My building official at the time overruled me because it was his department, and he said he needed all the computers for all the employees. So I was overruled there. But I did share with the committee when I was asked to cut computers, I cut three. All right. Um, I'll be more than happy to comply with what the finance wants. We already wants. bought the computers, so it's. I think it's. We still have 12 computers that we don't know where they're going. Oh, we don't. Oh, we don't. Miss Green, that's enough, please. Thank you. So yeah, I, I would think we should find out where those 12 are going. All right. So what's pull? What's pull the CDW? Uh, I mean, it makes no sense to pay for something that we don't need. I'm not saying we don't need them, but if we know where they're at, that's no, right, right. You know, I mean, I'm looking to hear that. You know, I'm looking at fire's got two computers, building has four, which Howard just explained. You know what I mean? We're just, it's kind of like just like a miscellaneous throw it out there. We got 12 computers. Who needs one? Could we make a partial payment? So okay. can you can you ask? So we're going to pull the CDW invoice. So we pull could we pay? Part. Could we pay what what we know went out and not pay the 11 that are in question? Sure. So that's partial payment. Sure. Um, I think we should pay. Her report from Paradigm. What uh, yeah, I, I think we should wait. I, I'd like to see the report from from Paul before we go ahead. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that we pull this uh, this entire invoice for twenty four thousand nine oh seven fifty. Nine oh seven is fifty cents. Yes, five zero. Okay. Just so, and that Paul can have that report, just so we could uh, clear up any uh, rumors or just so we know. So there's just not twelve computers floating around. We have a better idea. So. All right. Uh, any other questions? I, I just have one question. Hopefully, one of you guys can answer. It's on page five of the one I have. Cook County Treasurer, one hundred fifty thousand for twenty eighteen TIF two surplus funds. It's closing Distribution out. resolution is closing out twenty sixteen. So, so when we, the TIF exceeded the, the amount of revenue, and we had to reimburse the other taxing bodies in that TIF. So, okay. so we sent it to the treasurer's office and the treasurer sent so much to the part to the, so the school district's affected. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just I saw the big amount and didn't know what it was, so thank you for the information. So what we, because we extended the life of that TIF and part of the agreement with these other taxing bodies was anything over a certain amount, we would reimburse them. It's the direct center one, I think, right? To the, yeah. Okay. So, so then it's, it's not much. It's like 20 grand each, the school district, the park district, uh, the high school, the school district. Be informed. Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Anyone else? I know uh, Alderman Clinker, you had a question for the CSX transportation for four hundred and thirty-nine dollars and right. fifty-six cents, yeah, page five. Yeah. That was for the annual pipeline store modern sewer fee. Um, that was not appropriately budgeted for. So. Um, I know Jim Postal said that this is a necessity. We need so what this is, is we run, we have a stormwater drainage pipe running on CSX property. Water Okay, water. so we pay the... So we pay them to... We pay them a fee. Okay. To be on their right away. Okay. And it wasn't properly coded or whatever you want to call it? Budgeted. Okay. I mean, this is just kind of stuff that, and I'm new to all this, and I hate to keep asking a million questions, but it's the kind of stuff that we need to straighten away for next year is make sure this stuff's all in there so there's no surprises the last couple of months. You know what I mean? So, Jim, can we make sure you have this in your appropriation <coughs> for next year? Right. Great, thank you. Anything else? I know you had questions on the training reimbursement. I believe Chief Reader was able to. Chief Reader answered my questions, yeah. There was a, a couple of things that they had for coffee and donuts at lunch. Um, apparently they put on a training class and um, basically they ended up paying for lunch for some people and expressed my concern and he said in the future all fees will cover all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the first one. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Alderman Blotto, Alderman Alexander? No? All right. Um, let me total this new amount here really quick. Um, All right, 
so the new amount um, with the with the AT and T bill pool, the three line items for Olson and Sterk, and then the CDW uh, invoice pooled is now six hundred forty seven thousand one hundred sixty seven dollars and forty six cents. So is there a motion to to approve the amended accounts payable with those uh, those line items or with those those changes? Motion by Alderman Clinker. Second. Second by Alderman Bellato. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, motion is carried. Moving along, the wireless monitoring services agreement. Um, this is something I could talk on a little bit. We, um, to, in order to, and I, Jim's here, Postal's here, uh, our superintendent of public works in case there's something for the Thornton Elevated Tank, the Highland Pump Station, the Vincent's Pump Station, and certain meter vaults are our wireless monitoring if the tanks go below a certain level. Is that correct? So it's, it's basically an alarm that it notifies Jim or CJ or the water operators that something's funky going on. Uh, this is the agreement that would, that monitors, that covers our basis for having these alarms. Um, we approved something like this similarly last year. It comes up for expiration in 2020. We're just trying to get ahead of the curve uh, on this. So we won't be paying on this until, until April, I believe. Right? Is what Carrie told me. Uh, so it's cellular monitoring, cellular to the cloud. This is one of the reasons we didn't have the issue with the the water like the city had because this is going into a cloud backup. So is there a motion to approve this services agreement? Motion by Alderman Clinker. Is there a second? Alderman Alexander. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any, any nays? The ayes have it. Motion carried. Um, moving along, next is... Um, a architectural compliance sign quote I'm not entirely sure what what this entails so Marisol if you could please if my memory serves me right back in when the quote was dated um, we did uh, a walk through uh, the rec center um, public works Of course, and uh, found that um, some of our signs are not ADA compliant. And when we were told this, we said, "Well, go to the mayor's office and see what we have there. You know, go to the mm -hmm. clerk's office, go to the public site." So I showed them all around, right? And that's the quote they gave us for that. Um, we don't have to go with the mayor's signs. We can take all that out. But I believe the rec center, um, the golf course. Should have compliant signs. Once we have an elevator, and the police we don't about nothing on the second floor is ADA. Right. Let alone anything on the clerk's office that, that ramps out of compliance. Correct. I don't think we need to do this. At least not right now. You don't want to do the rec center or the police department? Uh, I have a question here on page one under compliance. The effective date for compliance with the 2010 standard is March 15, 2012 which is seven years ago. On or after this date, all newly constructed or altered facilities must comply with all the requirements of the 2010 standards. I, I guess I'm asking why we're waiting seven years to do it, first of all. And second of all is, do we know if there's a newer standard or do we know what we actually need to do? I mean, I have no problem. I, I think we should comply with the standards. But if we don't know what the current standard is or, I, I don't know, could it, I don't know if it's changed. I mean, that's so seven years that's old. So I see on the bottom here help with the city blinds compliance project is there a report that they did that you could share with us because um, obviously they did some sort of report besides just gave us these these signs if there was if there was a project I'm assuming they, they did some sort of report and why why this is why we need this um, I could call them and try to get help from them is for it just the I think it's just in general if we're the building needs to front ADA compliance on. So, so can we? I'm, I don't want to say no. Can we just? Could you just get some more information on? Yeah. And just like I said, if there's obviously a blind compliance project, I assume they, this Mark Kreider, Max Kreider, put together some sort of a report, just of saying, hey, this is why you need this. 
I think that would probably be helpful in explaining why, even without, maybe because even though we don't have an elevator, but there might be a reason why we need, because of a blind person still able to right. traverse the stairs. That, that's, not, that's not the point. The point but is there's, uh, but you there, can but buy these signs, not $3,000 for someone else to buy them and put them up for no, you. No, right. It's, I'm, I'm just saying there's, there's Braille. So I just, if there's just some justification on if we're, we did, there's something why we did this. So if we could just, we could just do this and we'll just take this up next time. Yeah, sure. Because I see it says, and kind of like what, what Jim said, there's the certain codes here, but I, I assume they did a specialized, just individual report for our, our situation. I don't think so. But, uh, when they were writing their notes, um, that was pretty much the finished product. But if you how did like this company then? How did we find this company then? Um, you know, they sent us um, uh, a sample of uh, nameplates on the desk. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so let's just see if they have some more information, and if not, we can maybe just even go out to bid on this uh, and do something else. Or like Alderman Blotto said, just us purchase the signs ourselves and have, have the city install it to have yeah. public works or somebody go around in one day. I know, Jim, you have a lot to do, but... At least we easy. have uh, a list of... Yeah, what we need. So so let's just see if there's if they did some sort of report um, instead of just giving us this price, um, and we'll go from there. Yeah. All right. Um, Next is our the tax abatement certificate. Um, this is for the general obligation, the water and sewer bonds. We have to abate a certain amount of, of taxes every year, and this is what what this does. Um, I'll be happy to try and answer any questions regarding this. I have a, a little bit of an answer. If there's any if there's aren't any questions, or if you want me to, so basically, the bond is the bond that was filed in 2006 is paid off now. Yeah. So this is so what it says. Um, we need to have the attached abatement certificate. Um, the attachment is the tax abatement for the 2006 water bonds. This will authorize the county to not levy taxes for the payments required to be made on the 2006 bonds in June 2020 and December 2020. Mm -hmm. We have done this abatement every year. After city council approves the abatement, they sign abatement certificate must get delivered to the Cook County Clerk's office. Make a motion. All right. Um, motion by Alderman Bolado. Is there a second? Sure. Clinker. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion's carried. All right. Moving along. Item number six Southside Lawn Care. Um, is there any? I don't know what. If the all, yeah, Mayor Salt, please. Um, this proposal is specifically for 119th and Longwood. Um, so again, um, this fell on my desk. Um, I was trying to be proactive and um, trying to get a budget line item for $4,000 so that the um, beds could be um, cleaned up more, much better than it was this past summer with the other contractor that we that we had. Um, it's going to take a little more money to do it right than what we've been paying. So uh, we're just trying to be proactive so that we're not under budgeting the MWRD uh, sure. beds. All right. Are there any questions? Well, a couple things. Sure. This didn't come to community development, which is the first step before yeah. finance has to approve to pay for something. Sure. Secondly, Kevin, um, isn't this being addressed right now through Robinson? They might be tearing all this up anyway. Or Jim, do you know the answer to this they, one? I do. They need to, okay, so right now we're trying to ask WRD for permission to do that. Yeah. And once we get the okay, then we can pull all that out. But if they need to agree on that first before but we But we have time, that. so we yes, don't we really do. need to do this until the spring. No, so. Right, but we just wanted to budget four grand on that line item, so we're not under budgeting. It's not only this this area, though. So we have an RFP coming out of community development that are, uh, uh, is attacking, I think, 12 or 14 locations, Howard. Um, it would be probably the best scenario for the city once that goes through the whole process of community development and resolution finance committee to approach the company that's the lowest bid on that first, whoever it is. Then you have something to buy a baseline to compare it to. Um, but I would send this to community development. All right. So there's a motion to send it to community development for uh, for further discussion. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Clinker. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. But long story short, I say a bid bidding process, not just a, just one price. And sure. No. So there'll be further discussion on this. So we'll take this up at a later date. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Marisol and Alderman Boato. Um, 
So this is, um, I see something here from June 2nd, 1986. I wasn't even born yet. So. I got lots of questions on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Mead service agreement. Um, I believe this is probably our agreement for Mead, which I know they do the, the stoplights and some of the traffic signals. Um, is Jim, is this just a renewal of the agreement? I never saw it. You I, never saw it. I got, I got a question, Jim. If this agreement from 1986, all these traffic signals are IDOT roads. You know, I, I uh, questioned that at one time too, but even this one at Western and Vermont, it's a fair section of IDOT, but they say it's our, we, we as a, the city must have asked for this light at one time, so it's our light, it's our, it's our main. Can you come up to the microphone, Jim, please? So at um, uh, one point I did ask the question myself about Western and Vermont being uh, both I got streets in an intersection. But what I'm thinking is that the city at one time must have uh, um, requested this light to be there. It could go back a long time. So, so when a car hits one of these traffic lights? It's our responsibility. We, we pay for it, yes. And we normally are able to send Bill the insurance or uh, go after the insurance? Everyone in Vermont and uh, Western gets uh, hit by a truck quite often and we don't get anybody. You know, it seems like they cut that corner. Why, why is that? Why can't, why aren't we able to uh, go after them? Well, there's nobody, it's a hit and run. Oh, so they just take off. Why don't we send this back to Jim for his review? Yeah, is that, are you okay? Sure. We, we could probably hold off on this if you'd like to review sure. it. There, yeah. there'd be, there could be something that that's missing because if this agreement is from 1986 there could be yeah they there could be lights down by by alderman alexander that that are new or just elsewhere in town yeah mm -hmm. well i'll send a gym and then jim broke bring it to municipal yeah, services give it to me i'll, I'll contact me and go through it with them here jim do you want do you have it sure. no i don't i know well that's the the old one this is the new one right well i don't even have it well, I might, it might be a full side, sir, so. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. All right. Um, so we'll send that to municipal services and further. So is there a motion to send to municipal services? Yes, second. Motion by Alderman Alexander. Nicer to get on the scorecard. <laughs> second by Alderman Bellotto. All in favor of sending municipal services signify by saying aye. Aye. Hey, you didn't do the nice treatment for the South Sign Lawn Care. You make a motion second to send a community development. You did. Yeah, you did. did. Yeah, yeah, I said send a community okay. development. Okay. Motion by Alderman Blotto, second by Alderman Quinker. So I just didn't call you out like you called. I see how it is. So finally, Atlas Fire and Safety Inc. Service Agreement. Um, Mayor Solve, if you if you please, I. So this company is the one that replaces and checks our um, fire, ha fire extinguishers mm -hmm. in all the departments. Um, I was being proactive because I was following um, Alderman Annette Alexander's um, advice about um, every bill that we get, that service, do we have an agreement with them or not? So I've been trying to call and trying to ask those questions. And when I did, um, I had to go through some phone calls and try to get the service agreement before we signed off on it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So they're basically just coming in once a year and checking our extinguishers. Yeah. What, they, what are they, if he goes and he makes sure they're, they so, work? So I believe it's every October he comes through. Correct. Um, the way they did it when I was chief is, is I basically contacted them and then they went to each department and all the bills came back to me and then they went up to Pam she kept them separate so each department got billed properly. But well, what's what's Billy do? He goes. So basically, well, they have to be inspected. So they weigh them. They make sure that they're working properly. If they have to be recharged, they recharge them. Same thing as so if someone were to use one during the year, then he would come in. I'm sure that's in here too, um, uh, to just refill it. You know. So yeah, it's just right. basically making sure that they're up to date. Gotcha. And it's, I think it's every October. Is that when they're? I, I, um, I he was actually here in November. What's that? He was he he visited us in November. Okay, November. Okay. Yeah, they're, yeah, on, they're on the week. tag. So, so he would go to they go his people yeah. go to each department head and go through. They actually have a list November of everything. At least they did of what each department has. So something we've been doing. He asked the mayor time. to sign the agreement. We the mayor thought that it should go through the committees. All right. Um, I think this is another one 
we probably should send to public health and safety first um, okay. just so they have a chance to review it so is there a motion to send a, unless there's any questions before we we'll, we'll see it again after uh, after public health has a chance to look it over so is there a motion to send to public health and safety all we're not exam back to back by Alvin Pilato. All in favor, send it to public health and safety. Signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion's carried. Um, all, any alderman concerns, comments, announcements? Alderman Alexander, please. How far along? What's the status of the purchase of blue purchase and ordinance? We, we haven't addressed it in a while because the mics, well, it right? It should be done before the new year. We have the, we'll send it to, we'll send to Ingersoll and Montana well was the one I checked. Didn't we review through it? Page we by went page through it right? page by page and then yeah. they were supposed to put it on. So I'll have Matt just double check it yeah. and then we'll make sure it's on the agenda for the first meeting in January. All right. Yeah, because I think we put on hiatus because Mike not being here. Yeah, yeah. 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 why not? We just had finance director. Mm -hmm. Send it through. So, so a little update on that because I was asked to be in, involved with that. Um, we've actually interviewed, uh, the mayor got a hold of me, actually, the mayor saw that we've interviewed a couple people for that job already, and then we have another couple interviews set up this week. So the mayor asked myself, Alderman Farenwald, him, myself, and Kelly Burke are the ones that are doing the interview. So Marisol set up different appointments and stuff, so it was last week or the week, week before, I think. We met, two pe we, we met two people, and then she's pulled a few more, so we're going to meet with more. So hopefully by next meeting, we should have a little bit better idea where we're at with that as far as what the mayor's intentions are as far as hiring. So it would be nice to get someone on there, and, and I've, I've urged and stressed and everything that, that this person needs to be very transparent, needs to be you know, here all the time. Now that Mr. Marzal missed the last half of his meeting, you know, we need somebody that's going to show us and tell us and keep up on these kind of things. Agreed. Thank you for that, Jim. Thank you for your participation. Um, for the record, I did ask to be included in those, but I was I Yeah, was, I, I suggested annoyed, that, so. uh, that you were included also the treasurer and possibly even Dave Meyer because you guys are, you know, more knowledgeable and, and those two guys especially deal with it on a more direct basis. And I didn't get a response. Yeah, I didn't. So I just, like I said, for the record, I did ask the mayor to be included and I was ignored. So um, any other comments, concerns, questions? No, all right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Alderman Clinker, second by Alderman Boato. All in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, all right. We are adjourned at 7.07 p.m. Our next meeting will be January 6, 2020 at 6 p.m. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody.